Good morning everyone. I'm back with another video and this one is all about Timothy. It's a piece that I've uh, slow stitched and um, I've decided to make a video to show you my thought process that went into uh, Timothy. Now the history of Timothy, he's actually been designed by a South African fibre artist by the name of Catherine Harmer and Catherine has given a business in Brisbane uh, Australia permission to sell her image printed onto some calico. So this is the business in Brisbane that I purchased my piece of uh, printed cloth to sew textiles. So what I believe has been done is Catherine created this hair. He's a um, native to South Africa and she's embroidered him with fibers and then mounted him on fabrics. So they've then, using that image, printed this guy on some calico, which we can purchase and then embellish accordingly. So that's what I've done. So when I received my um, hair, he was a piece of calico that sits just in behind here that I've attached to some quilted fabric. Now this fabric, I believe it is still available. I've had it for many years and I've used it in um, quilts and it's pre-quilted with a little bit of um, wadding behind. So it really makes a beautiful surface to, to work on. The um, piece that the hair was on, I've tacked down and then I've started the embroidery process using pretty much satin stitch. And I've gathered every gray cotton I had through two beiges. So I'll just bring him up to the screen and you can sort of see the stitches. So in around his eye is um, the satin stitch and then some little French knots in the white to give that reflective white look when you look at an eye and then some little lazy daisies just to the side for little whiskers around his eyes and then with the satin stitch I tried to go in the direction that I sort of felt the fur would be sitting on his face so then I changed direction again and changed direction but when it came to his body I just kept that all in the same stitch lengths and direction and I sort of would do a heap of the dark then I'd come back with the next grey shade and then the next grey shade around here I decided to leave the dark shades out that I use there and um, just work with the lighter shades. Then in amongst the bunny, I started piecing in pieces of lace and then on top of that sequins and the, um, the seed beads. With uh, his cheek, I just was not sure how I was going to stitch his cheek and then it dawned on me that I could just use the sequins which gave it a beautiful texture and then in amongst there with the seed beads is some little um, rectangular tubular beads and also some sequins and then I just carried on from there so once I sort of stitched in the bulk of the body and the face I then started working on the ears and I gave um, Timothy a bit of a halo and then used the beads on the outer edge of the ears and then worked in a little bit of the lace to sort of suit and then around the outside of the piece to frame the um, hair, I just started building in um, all sorts of different elements from the doilies to some little flowers I had. And then I made some little calico flowers. I'll show you how I made those. And just tried to square it up to the point where that if this went into a frame, it was sort of squared up ready for a rectangular frame. With some of the elements I've used on this piece, um, a lot of them have a bit of history with me. My um, grandmother was a seamstress and made wedding dresses all of her life. They're actually dairy farmers, but grandma brought in extra income for the family by um, doing a lot of sewing. So, and in her career, wedding dresses seem to be the um, main thing that she sewed. So my childhood was when we got to grandma's house, we'd be straight into the sewing room to have a look at what she was making. So I sort of saw the era when the bridesmaids, they were all wearing different colors, colors of the rainbow. And then the dresses on the brides were just 
enormous big lace sequins beads she'd bead everything and I was lucky enough to be the oldest of the grandkids so she actually made my wedding dress as well so very thrilled to have experienced that she's uh, has since passed and she was 97 when she passed and still was as sharp as a tack so it was awesome to see and I have to wonder if all that sewing and that thinking and planning and cutting patterns from nothing and redesigning clothes to get extra wears out of them sort of helped keep her mind very active and um, gave her longevity into the future. So that's where I think my gene comes from. I uh, won't ever be as good as grandma was, but um, I certainly have inherited the love of textiles, fabrics, stitch, embroidery, etc. So some of the pieces in this are actually even older than grandma. For example, there's a lace through here that I've cut apart and drifted through the whole piece that is really old. I'm not sure its story, but it's come from um, my grandmother's mother. So we're talking pieces of lace that are, you know, 100 plus years old. So it was just a beautiful place to pop them. Some of the other pieces are more modern, like some of these doilies are, um, are definitely more of the 80s. There is a crochet doily of grandmother's here, if you can see that. It was just a little one that she had made. She was a prolific crocheter all the time. When she wasn't sewing wedding dresses, she was doing tapestries and crocheting of an evening to unwind from her day on the sewing machine. So it was beautiful to incorporate this uh, little doily here. And then I just layered and layered and layered the different elements. I tried to give a little bit of air through here just to let the bunny feel like he's behind it all. And then he's also wearing the um, pieces of lace as well. The uh, one piece of lace that was on a um, vintage tablecloth had all of these embroidered little scallopy leaves. So I fussy cut them out and wherever I wanted just a, a softening of the rabbit, I would just insert one of those little sprigs that came from that lace piece. There's another one there. There's another one there. I hope you can see all this. I um, then put some French knots through just to soften it all with the beads. And um, these little shapes here, they're like a, um, nearly like a spider's web. They came from the edge of a handkerchief that I picked up somewhere. I really like to bring into my pieces um, different shapes as in rectangles. It really helps break up the design. Otherwise, it'd be very circular. It doesn't always happen because finding rectangles in the crocheting world like that are quite um, difficult. But it really just changes the look of the piece. There's another piece of that sprig that I fussy cut out of a doily. Just worked through there. A little rectangle on its side to create a little diamond shape. That's part of a, a tablecloth. Gives you a real netty sort of feel. So yeah, with this piece, I really tried to get um, different shapes and textures. Okay, so I wanted to show you some of the elements just in their raw form before they ended up on Timothy here. And I also want to show you what I did with these little flowers. Another thing I considered was I only beaded Timothy. I was tempted to bead the whole thing. But I just thought it might have been sort of too much. So I only focus the shiny glitzy beads on the bunny. So his environment's very neutral. Um, now I'll just show you some pieces that I've used in um, this that I, I just love. And I use in a lot of my uh, slow stitch because it just gives you different textures. This one here is a common uh, machine made um, doily that you'll pick up at op shops and I love it because of the grid and the net it just brings a different element now this is a handkerchief that has a crocheted edge these little pieces here are really good for popping in around the place to you know just to change the eye from seeing circles all the time I'll just bring it up they're great you can cut them out and then um, use them throughout your piece. Even these tiny little little circles here, you could cut that out and that could be the form of a flower 
So you don't need a lot of fabrics when you do slow stitch because there's just so many beautiful little elements around that you can um, salvage. Now, when I referred to the piece that I fussy cut, it's like from something like this. So see how this has got those little sprigs coming out and a bit of a flower and some dots? Well, that is really good for fussy cutting it around. Get rid of as much fabric as you can, but not getting too close to the embroidery that it would unravel. This is done on a sewing machine and um, my guess it's probably the 70s. So these elements are great, like that flower there would be great cut out and worked into your piece. So keep your eye open for doilies like that. They're fantastic for giving you little bits and pieces that you can poke in. And eat like, for example, this little one here, because it starts at the flower, finishes at the flower, you might decide to cut it there and use the flower. If not, you could cut it there and just use the little sprig. And then at the end, create your own flower. So you've sort of incorporated a different element and then embroidered your own flower at the top. So they're really good to keep an eye on. Um, in my travels, I've come across bits and pieces of lace fringing that are attached to tablecloths. Fantastic. Also, uh, netty looking. I really like that open net feel about my pieces of lace. So that's another example. The other day, I was at the op shop and I picked up this little um, blouse. It's like a, a vest that a young girl would have worn. It was just a couple dollars and it is all lace and there's so many pieces in this that could be used from the the netting once again then there's flowers in there and uh, all sorts of leaves motifs like that is just a an absolute treasure and I, like i said i think it was um, four dollars or something like that and it's like fairly modern it's uh, a valley girl so their stores are everywhere here in australia so great little piece. So don't be afraid that once you've gone through the craft section of an op shop, you then um, have a look through where all the clothes is because you might pick up something there that is covered in lace. Now, I just wanted to show you my favorite element that I use in a lot of my work. And that is um, the doilies with the um, medallions in them. So this is an example of them when they're joined. There'd be um, another couple medallions that you could join there. So it creates the piece. And then I just cut them into sections. I leave a few in larger pieces and then the rest I cut up. And you get like little ones that join bigger ones. So I pop them in a drawer and they're just ready to go. Now these aren't um, handmade at all. These were mass produced um, from textile mills from India and China back in the, I think they've become pretty popular in the 70s, 80s, 90s. And there is literally hundreds and hundreds of them out there. So when you see them at op shops, grab them, usually about $2 to $3, um, grab them, cut them up, and you can use them as some elements through your pieces. Now, when you cut the medallions out, you're often left with the edge. So what I do is I wind those strips onto some card and that then gives you little pieces that you can cut and add to your, um, your work. Now, this one here is a doily that um, Grandma made. So it's a lot finer. So you can see that um, she's uh, hand crocheted this and if I do another piece that I want to store some of her work in, uh, this might become part of the background and then I'd go from there. So that just pops grandma's um, handwork, fancy work into a piece and then I build on top of that. So it's a little bit of both of us. So that's pretty much what I've done with Timothy and the elements. The um, beads themselves I use were just a different sizes of seed beads. In this case, I used the champagne and the a little bit of the pearl, not a lot, just a couple here and there, but I tried to stay within the golds. Now this, um, this 3D textural flower here, all I did with that was I drew on some calico a, a bean shape. 
so that um, all I did then was cut this out like so this is a pen that allows you to draw on fabric and then you just apply the iron or a heat source and it just fades away so really handy for this type of work. So I cut one, cut two. Now when you create this little flower, I didn't on Timothy, but you can stitch into the center of your flower some um, beads, French knots, colonial knots, even a little piece of lace could go into the center. So all I did then is put the two pieces like an X and then use the stitch to join them and that's the foundation I hope you can see that that's the foundation of the little flower so then you could come along like I said and pop some beads in there so once I stitched that to secure it I then went to the piece and attached it so that could then just become part of another cluster building on your flowers Okay, so that's the story of Timothy. He is a South African hair pre-printed onto some calico, which I purchased through a business here in Australia. I'll put their details in the description if you wanted to go and check out some of the artists that are featured within this um, business and um, embellished him to make Timothy. So another example of some slow stitching and uh, oh, as for his name there was a, a scrap piece of fabric and i just printed with some uh, light brown the word timothy timothy using some letter stamps so that i could build up the actual word the um i think that's it that's the story of my timothy thank you everyone i hope you enjoyed that and i will see you soon in another video bye bye